Thank you so much, Marilio. For more on this story, see our online news magazine, theshavings.com. Assignment editor Skylar Pittman explores what makes the Blue Man Group an enduring part of theater in Chicago. Area residents will have to think twice next time they take out the trash. Whiting and the City Public Works facility will no longer be picking up hazardous household waste material placed in the alleys of homes. Batteries, oil-based paint, antifreeze, and similar items must be taken to one of the Lake County Household Hazardous Waste Collection events. Visit the Lake County Solid Waste Management District website for a complete list of acceptable items, plus the collection schedule and locations. Two additional collections for residents in the 46394 zip code are planned for May and November. In other Whiting news, residents and businesses in the Whiting and Robertsdale area can take advantage of a community rewards program that will save them money on tolls. The new program allows residents to travel the Klein Avenue Bridge at a discounted rate. Those who qualify will save nearly $2 per trip, paying only $1 instead of the usual rate of $2.75. Two axle vehicles with an I-Pass or Easy Pass transponder can see if they qualify and register for the discount at thekleinavenuetolls.com. To make eligibility, drivers must make 10 or more trips across the bridge per month. Wave TV had an opportunity to sit down with Professor Mark Casello to get an inside scoop on Next Week Humanities Festival here on campus. I'm Mark Casello. I'm the chair of the Department of Humanities at Calumet College and also the director of the English and Media Communications Program. So as I recall, the Humanities Festival started about a year after I began at CCSJ, so it'd be about 2012. And there was a program from the Indiana Humanities that was offering funding uh, for colleges to create some kind of a event around the idea of competition. And so we submitted an application for that grant. We, won, we were awarded the grant. And we had our first festival. It wasn't really a festival. It was really a, a one-day event in the gym where a speaker came in. We brought like 200 students out to the gym and he talked to us about competition. Uh, and so it was pretty fun and that kicked off the festivals and from there it grew into a week-long series of events. First I'd say that the motivation for creating the festival in general is to make the students more aware that the humanities are something uh, in their lives already and that's something that can enrich their lives. Many students might not even know uh, what the disciplines of the humanities are, which are arts, literature, history, uh, religion, and philosophy. Those are the five disciplines we emphasize at CCSJ of the humanities. When we think about developing a festival theme, we try to come up with something that's relevant to what's happening in the world today, but also a, a term that's broad enough that we can bring together lots of different kinds of events from uh, arts and religious, religion, philosophy, uh, literature, bring those together in a creative way around a theme. This year's theme is bridges and uh, this is one I actually came up with the idea for in part because one day I was driving to work and if you live in northwest Indiana or southeast Chicago you cross a lot of bridges to get to CCSJ. Um, sometimes they're draw bridges that are being uh, pulled up. Sometimes they're just steel bridges that are crossing uh, various areas. And it made me realize how privileged we are as people that somebody before us made these bridges uh, for us to cross. And I thought, how difficult would my life be if these bridges weren't there um, for me? And I, I realized it was a nice metaphor for sort of privilege that we enjoy uh, sometimes. And so you'll hear people talk about privilege and they don't really understand that term sometimes or they go, well, I'm not privileged, you know. But all of us have some forms of privileges, some more than others. And so bridges to me, was a metaphor for privilege, but at the same time, bridges also can bring us together. They can connect communities that are separated, but at the same time, they can become sort of uh, physical boundaries or barriers that can separate us as well. And so it was a rich theme that could be explored in lots of different ways. So this year's festival runs uh, a span of four days and there are 16 sessions across four days. Uh, some of the highlights, uh, the festival ends with a keynote address by Father Dave Kelly. And uh, Father David Kelly has been working in Chicago's back of the yard neighborhood 
on community reconciliation. Uh, and so that's a very interesting talk. He's going to tell us about some of his real experiences in helping you know, uh, reduce violence in communities, helping people find resources for their communities. So I'm very excited about that one. Uh, we have competitions happening that are going to be great for students uh, to earn uh, prizes. So we have a storytelling slam where students are going to get up, take the microphone and tell some personal stories related to the theme of bridges and they can earn a cash gift card for that. Uh, speech day I'll be hosting and that is also another kind of oral communication event where students are trying to speak publicly uh, in a three minute speech and there's an applause meter, it's kind of a reality show format for that one and the students who score the highest on the applause meter uh, end up winning uh, prizes, there's three prizes for that one. We've got film screenings of two great movies this uh, week, we've got CODA uh, a film about a girl who's being raised by uh, deaf parents and then Selma about uh, Dr. King's crossing of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Uh, in addition to that we've got a graphic design workshop, a creative writing workshop, so lots of things to choose from at this year's festival. Now, another reason we created the festival was to share information about our programs in the humanities. A lot of students come to CCSJ and they're interested in, in professional careers in accounting or business or law enforcement. But there's actually a rich world of careers available in the English and communications field as well as the digital and studio arts field. So uh, we have two programs that we're, we're promoting here. Students can major or minor in English and media communications or uh, digital and studio arts if they're interested in graphic design, uh, film, uh, visual effects. Uh, audio production, all those things happen under the umbrella of the humanities here at CCSJ. One thing I wanted to mention that the Humanities Festival couldn't be possible without the faculty who have been planning the event. Really we begin planning the year before for the festival that happens in the spring and so uh, all of our, our part-time faculty, our full-time faculty have a voice in creating the festival. So there's really about, uh, you know, you know, each faculty member hosting their own sessions. They're in charge of all the logistics of organizing their individual sessions. So lots of, a, lots of work goes into the festival. We're really excited for this year's festival because we were fortunate to receive a $3,000 Humanities Action Grant from the Indiana Humanities, which was supported by the National Endowment for the Humanities. So it was a pretty competitive grant process and they were really uh, supportive of the work here we're doing in bringing the humanities to CCSJ students and that funding's helping pay for our refreshments, supporting faculty stipends for developing the sessions and uh, helping offset some of the institutional costs uh, that it takes. One event I wanted to talk about that I'll be hosting uh, that's pretty interesting, we're bringing uh, a CCSJ alumnus back to campus which is uh, Michael Puente. Uh, Michael Puente works for WBEZ Radio in Chicago. He's an award-winning uh, journalist. Um, he was the head of the Indiana Hispanic Journalists Association and he'll be coming to campus to talk about reporting across state lines. So the idea was that Michael had to, he has to cover news from Northwest Indiana as well as Chicagoland and there's some tension in reporting those stories across those state lines because how do you make these stories newsworthy to these distinct audiences? Northwest Indiana can be both urban and rural and uh, as can Chicagoland and so uh, he has these tensions he has to answer. So I'll be interviewing Michael about those experiences and so I'm really looking forward to that event. Thank you to both Professor Casello and Aaron for those updates on Humanities Fest. Be sure to register in advance to reserve your spots. Thanks again to Tabitha DeLine for Campus Beat, Matt Mabry with Sports, Marilio Lopez for his reporting on the Blue Man Group, and Erin Armstrong for her news about the annual Humanities Festival. That's all we have for this week. We hope you enjoyed our show. If you need any more news, be sure to check out our student-run newspaper website, theshavings.com. Also, be sure to subscribe for our new YouTube channel. You'll be the first to know when new episodes are dropped and you can find all the episodes of Wave TV. I'm Roxy Inez. See you guys next time.